Chris here again. Let's go ahead and arrange our UVs in the one-to-one -one space. So I'm going to select the low poly controller and I'm going to start by moving this front uh, shell here and scaling it down a bit. And where it says Texel Density underneath Transform, I'm just going to change this to 10 and then hit Set. Now I want all the other shells to be set to 10 to start with. Um, or at least the same de Texel density. And that way there won't be uneven texture detail at the end. So I'm going to go to shell mode, select all the shells, and then hit um, set where it says Texel density. Notice they'll all scale to the proper um, Texel density. Then I'll go to arrange and layout and gather shells just to get them closer together. And I'm going to start arranging these. So this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I sped it up a little bit. I'm going to select all of these actually and hit orient shells just to straighten them, uh, which will make arranging them easier. And then I can go to um, the transform menu and rotate by 90 degrees um, pretty easily if I want to rotate. I scaled down that inner shell right there. Um, which is going to create uneven texel density. I did that because that is the um, part where the cord is going to be covering, so no one's really ever going to see it. Don't forget to frequently be saving your work. Looks like I forgot to actually unwrap this. Or, so I'll go ahead and select um, these edges here and unfold it, orient the shell, and I'm good to go. So the main goal here is to use as much of the one-to-one -one space as possible with even texel density uh, so that we're not wasting pixel space when it's time to texture. We need to make sure that our UV shells are not touching each other and that there's a little bit of space between each one. The UV shells should also not um, you know, touch the border or cross the border of the one-to-one -one edge. So you're going to want to have um, padding, uh, some edge padding between you know, the one-to-one -one border as well as the shells. It's a good idea to try to arrange these shells in such a way that you will remember um, or that it makes sense to you um, that you will remember you know which shells represent which portion of the model I'm going to need to cut this shell in half in order to be able to fit it in. There are several really long shells that we'll have to do that with, uh, including the cord, which is very long. Kind of rotate this D-pad shell 45 degrees because it was tilted. delete my history. These shells are stacked on top of each other so if you just click on one and then drag it off you'll you can unstack them. And that's the select and start button. Same with the A and B button they're stacked on top of each other as well. So my general workflow is to you know work from the top of the group list to the bottom and you're going to want to make sure that you know you select all of these shells that you have already done so that you can see their UVs or all the pieces that you've already done and then you can arrange them
let's select all of these for now and go to arrange and layout and stack shells so that they're directly on top of each other and I'll do the same for these those are the screw holes or those are the plug ends not the screw holes for now I'll just put them here in this video I'm kind of doing this without a you know clear knowledge of how the final layout is going to look so you kind of just go for it and make adjustments as you go Make sure that you're saving often. During this process, um, up to this point, I had a couple of crashes and I had to start, I had to do this again a few times. So just save as you go along so you don't have to just keep redoing the, the same thing over and over again. Okay, so next do the cord next. And the way I'm gonna approach this is I'm going to drag it um, up. I'm gonna change the text density. Let's try five at first. And I wanna put this down near the bottom like so. And then come up to the top, cut the closest edge loop, grab the UV shell and then drag it back down and repeat this until I get the entire cord into the one-to-one -one space. And it looks like that textile density is too small. So I'm going to go ahead, or I have room to increase it, so I'll change it to seven and see if I can fit the entire cord with a textile density of seven. This cord isn't going to have a ton of details on it, um, like text or anything like that. So it's okay if the textile density is um, a bit different than the rest of the controller, so long as it's not drastically different. I will frequently make, you know, minor textile density adjustments in the name of using more of the one-to-one -one space. I have to cut this off and then sew it onto um, this piece. Then I can move this piece. So I have some extra room and I'm going to use that room to scale up the D-pad.
and let's move these shells down here. We'll keep the D-pad up top. And the reason why I'm going to scale the D-pad up is because there are uh, some details, some arrow indentations that I would like to include through texture work. And so it would be nice to have a higher texel density in order to make sure that that detail work is coming through clearly. So now we get into sort of a the jigsaw puzzle. So if you have a red shell, it means it's inside out, you can select that shell, then go to modify and flip to um, flip it over. I have some extra room here. So there's a couple things I wanna do. I wanna have uh, screws, you know, baked in, or at least, or perhaps using a height map, um, you know, inside those screw holes. So I'm just gonna scale up these screw holes, like where the screws would go, these shells, um, so that I can go ahead and have more texel density there. I also have enough room where I don't have to stack these, so I will unstack them. Change this to my Classic. I'll put the high poly controller back on top of the low poly controller and save my work. Um, I'm going to delete the history as well. And we'll see you in the next video.